Morning guys, welcome back. Back out the hangar nice and early this morning. Got the undercarriage sort of on. Here's where that's going. So you remember on the last video, I went on a bit about you know, the centre line and I went three eighths of an inch higher than centre. <clears throat> now I've put the wheels on the aircraft. This is all just sitting on the airframe at the moment. Got the spreader bars on. Um, basically if I zero the fuselage and zero the axle, then I know I'm sort of plumb. I've measured back from, from the firewall. So the wheels are not, one's not trailing and one's not leading. And also measured back to my fin post. Bear in mind we're upside down at the moment. Gets a bit frustrating guys to say the least. Um, like in my last video, you know, I thought I was, you know, cheating the system a bit by trying to anticipate what was going to happen. Um, turns out I didn't anticipate enough. The, the plans clearly state everything needs to be on centre line. Then you add in this Teflon part, add in the Teflon or PVC. So this is your suspension slides up and down. The first issue, I guess, is, and the designer should know this, you build these plates on the board, and once again, clearly says in a build video, you know, make them one on top of each other. So on the bench, I put a square here, laid all these up. But you can see what happens on the outside, this bottom's out, but on the inside, it doesn't touch. So what should have happened, you can see down here, this plate should have been half inch lower than the inside plate, so make an inside and an out one. You know, just building one on top of the other, that's just the easy way of doing it, I guess. Um, not a biggie, but it just means it only hits the bottom outside one and the top inside one. Yeah, I could muck around and file it, but I haven't got much edge distance here. And this is how the aircraft's gonna sit. I'm gonna... <coughs> Still going to make a, a C channel because a bungee goes around the end of these stubs if you like. I'll clean this up. We'll get to that. Um, so I don't want to take half inch out of that. It'll only leave me quarter inch of wall thickness to um, have the landing gear sitting on. And then the other issue, of course, is when it's bottomed out, you can see it still pokes out a bit. And when I put the wheel on, the wheels lean. Um, the wheels are slightly splayed, so only slightly, you know, five degrees or something, because um, it gets multiplied as it goes out. So, what I think I'm going to do today, I've had a play here. This this is the, the culprit. I'm going to lower that down 12 mil, whatever that is in, it's about half an inch. Um, still retain my edge distance, and then hopefully that'll allow the axle to travel back up further. You can see there, it needs to be level. They need to be level. Um, otherwise, yeah, as I said, the wheels are in at the top. All the photos and that that I've got, I've seen a few guys with the wheels. It looks really sad. It looks like you've had a heavy landing. And I reckon people will just ask you all the time, have you bent the undercarriage? So anyway, that's what we're gonna do this morning. Also had a win with a sandblaster. So I think I mentioned I was going to put this in the boat and take it on a trailer, a fuselage. Good thing about being in a club and everyone's helping each other. So thanks, Adrian. He had a portable um, sandblaster with the grit as well. Uh, it's been recycled a couple of times and I'm going to recycle it again myself. So we're going to hook this up, sandblaster fuselage, get the welds redone. So that saves me a lot of mucking around. I can just do it outside. Away we go. Happy days. Right, undercarriage, going well. Just want to cap the ends here. So I just grab some cardboard. Cardboard first, easy to work with. And we'll make a bit of a, make a template. Get our radius, etc. all good. Want some nice radius on here for the bungee. Bungee will run over the top. Looking good. Right, just to finish off. So I got the bolts in. Yes guys, I know, you know, I just whack as many watches as I need until I get the correct size bolt and castellated nuts everywhere. It's not the final fit, so don't, don't get me in trouble for that one. Um, fit of the tangs, so this will be crosswise, cross bracing, front to rear, or front to front, rear to rear. 
So I have two cross braces in there. Um, one is one eighth wire, I believe. All went really well. Um, just had that little bit of little bit of panel work at the front. Get this. I wanted the strut touching front and back. So those landing loads. I didn't want any shunt room for the. You know, if I had quarter inch, I'd have quarter inch. I call it shunt room, if you like, to guillotine the bolt on a heavy landing. Um, bear in mind, we've got suspension. But yeah, that's all down. Touching the longer on, bolts are in, and basically time to pull it apart now. Um, that's what I like a lot of this. So we're going to get <clears throat> same as with the cruiser. I know what's going to happen. Um, it's going to come together really quick once I, you know, we've got a rudder and fin tailplane elevator hanging on the wall what's that five five bolts i think and that'll be on i'll get the tail wheel done this i've had the wheels on this i'm not sure if i filmed that but i i did have the wheels on there it looks pretty cool um i've got my wheels nice and vertical which i was sort of probably over overcooked that one a bit but wanted the wheels to look nice rather than you know happy face instead of sad face um spreader bars it's almost time to start thinking, painting, think about painting some of these smaller bits. Um, but anyway, I've got these marked and I'll keep those marked. Um, so I've got A and like here, well you can see there, D and D. Get where I'm going with this. So even when I paint this, I'm going to leave these, I'll mark it on the inside somewhere discreet, probably on the bottom of these that you'll never see. Just leave them marked because they don't, they're not all symmetrical, it only goes on one way. Um, made up our end plate covers, trap for young players. The, the big, there's a big washer that slides up and down with the bungee, so you need to make room for that both inside and on the outside, and vice versa. Here's the inside. Um, a, lot of little, a lot of little traps there, I guess. So, there's a, yeah, the washer. Here's the bungee cord. Here's the washers in question. So they go around, around the Teflon, which runs in that slot. So you just need to make room when it bottoms out that the washer can uh, do its job. Nice, tight and right. A lot of tangs. I think this will end up green and these will be sort of matte black, something like that. But like I said, it's almost time to start thinking about whacking some paint on some parts before you get too far ahead. Uh, should go back together nicely. So gear will come off, sandblast the fuselage. Going to inhibit the engine now, I'll give you a look at that. Also in my spare time I thought I would, uh, got the wingtips. I might just bend up the wingtips so the bows are ready to go. The plans show a radius and then just straight, but the real sop with camel, of which I've got the plans under the bench, sort of has a radius and then a nice sort of bow. Um, I'm in two minds. The easy way is just one radius and a straight, like I did on the tail plane, but it makes the wings sort of look a bit sort of neat, just straight off. Um, but trying to do a nice radius it's harder than you think, although I won't. It may even be similar to the wing rib, the top wing rib. We'll have a look, but I'm going to draw up a template and we'll bend up our wing tips is where I'm going with that. All right, rip the, rip the wrapping off. All I'm going to do is pull the, um, pull one spark plug out of each cylinder, spray WD-40 everywhere, spin the engine over and wrap it back up. So I won't film that guys, but Here's my beautiful engine, Rotec, but it's going to be uh, it's going to be great. And Paul's up the road and helping me out, so we'll get that burn, purring and burning real soon. First taxi test, I guess you'd say. Put her on the buggy. There you go. All right, guys, probably a quick video of that one. We've got the undercarriage on. I'm half tempted actually to um, put the undercarriage on with the real wheels, then I can walk it around the airfield. 
Um, it's got a date with the sandblaster, as you know, and then up to the welding shop. So not as silly as it sounds to actually put the undercarriage on and wheel it around, but um, I've got it firmly attached to the buggy. We'll see how the buggy goes. If it gives me the horse and bits, we'll um, change the buggy and we'll go with the real wheels. But anyway, thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.